Hello, welcome to uh, the latest episode of uh, our video games. Good, actually. This video game movies. Yes, our video game movies good actually because we all know video games are all right. Yeah, they're okay. Um, Nothing to write home about. Here we are, back in the boxes with my ever rotating pieces of artwork. I say ever rotating. There's like three choices yeah. it rotates through. We're back mm. on the churches today. I had a new uh, released a new single. Got a new album coming up soon. It's good. Off topic, yep. but uh, but good. A little bit off topic. Yeah, yeah. But yes, um, uh, we are hmm. discussing uh, Doom today. Yep, the from uh, two thousand five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> starring Dwayne the Rock Johnson, although at the time just Dwayne Johnson, because it was when he was trying to remove himself from wrestling. However, worth noting and straight into the spoilers here for this film. If you've uh, not seen this film from two thousand five and you want to, mm. and you're worried about spoilers, go and uh, watch it and come back. It's on Netflix mm. in the UK. But in a time period where Dwayne Johnson or Dwayne the Rock Johnson was willing to be a villain, yes, which in you know fact, would never in, happen now. I mean, in the right film, he might play a villain, uh, or I mean, I don't arguably, think he... uh, arguably Black Adam eventually will become a, a, a villain, unless they're doing the other route of. Like villainy becomes angry hero. Like, ah. I mean, let's face it. In Z- Zack Snyder's universe, um, Black Adam would probably be like Santa Claus. <laughs> so, um, uh, but the Shazam films feel far enough removed. Mm. True. But yes. Um, so yeah. So it's it, it's The Rock um, doing a heel turn later in the uh, in the film. I did um, see this when it came out, but I remembered very mm. little of it other than the first person section. And um, the baby faces, and we'll stick with the wrestling uh, jargon, being uh, Rosamund Pike, uh, who was actually brilliant in this, except for her questionable American accent. Yeah, she's um, good. I wouldn't call her. I won't call her the good guy. I wouldn't call her the bad guy either. She's she's. I mean, she's down there willingly experimenting on people. Like she isn't. She wasn't aware of that. She was aware of it. No, she was aware of that. At it, like later on in the film, when she was downloading various various files, but she didn't. It, she no, the film heavily implied that she knew that was going on. She just thought it was for the greater good. She wasn't mm, necessarily yeah. doing the experimenting, but she knew it was happening. Yeah, fair enough. I'll t- I'll give you that. I'll give you that. And um, Carl Urban. Yes, who is um, uh, very Carl Urbany. He's incredibly Carl Urban-y. Um I too haven't seen this for a long time. I did see this at the cinema. Um, and I think I've seen it once since the cinema, but that could be as long ago as about 2007. So, I mean, this is maybe 14 years since I've seen this. Like, it's, a, um, it's not a good film. It's not, and yet... You now, know, there's a few things I quite enjoyed mm. Sarge's descent into madness yeah is because the idea is that uh, much like Resident Evil film it's like how can we make Doom without like it has that similar kind of connotation to a lot of these video game movies in how can we nearly touch on on the game plot by doing something wildly not it <laughs> like yeah because it obviously in in the the Doom games, um, it's a portal to hell. Uh, it's a portal to hell. I mean, um, they, again, they don't have much in the way of plot. I think. I think Doom Three might have, but yeah, um, and th- like Doom Three had only just been out for a couple of years at this point because yeah. it was an original Xbox game, wasn't it? It was. Um, yes. In fact, let's let's just find out. Let's just find out. Um, so that was one year. So to be honest, this film would have been being made. Yeah. Uh, while Doom 3 was getting finished off. Um, and chances are they didn't necessarily speak to each other, nor did they expect Doom 3 to look as good, to feel as good, or even maybe even have a story. Um, so I can. I've totally never played Doom un- 3. I've played Doom 1, a- Doom 2, and I've played Doom, the new Doom. Well, now you've got a Series S. 
They are all on there. Is it? Yeah, so have it. Have a little. They tinker. are all on Game Pass. Um, Doom, Doom mm. one, two, sixty four, three. Doom mm. isn't. Doom Eternal is. Get on there then. But imagine um, with Bethesda now and Doom being a Microsoft IP, it won't be long till Doom Doom is on. They're like the recent mm, Doom the is remake, on there yeah, as well. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, I mean, I can totally understand the um, the reasoning behind changing from it being demons and hell <laughs> to um, genetic experiments. Um, I still quite like it though. I like the um, how they get to it. Um, that it's they found an uh, the remains of an ancient civilization on yeah. Mars that uh, looks like it ended up um, engineering itself out of existence. Um, and so they think they found something that can cure things effectively. Yeah, um, but the problem uh, is it has a people who are more effect. aggressive. Mm. It has a negative effect on them, amplifying their aggressiveness. Yes, um, and they as uh, they turn into monsters because, uh, of course, they um, they they test this thing. Um, on this absolute freakishly large murderer who's on death row. Yeah. Um, and so, of course, like this um, technology um, turns him into uh, a, an absolute ridiculous monster. Um, and then he goes hunting for other people to to turn into um, other aggressive monsters. Um, now, obviously, last... Uh, not last week because that was Mario, but two weeks ago we did uh, Resident Evil, which you've already mentioned. Yeah, I think similarities um, here. Who directed there this? Are, um, I looked it up actually, um, and I can't remember because it was quite a mouthful of a name. Um, however, um, quite not necessarily a an important director, but one hell of an important. Um, cinematographer and director of photography um which actually i think is one of the standout things and something i forgot about this film yeah it, it does look good what wonderfully shot and lit yeah like the lighting in particular especially compared to some of the stuff that we've trudged through recently um hey the lighting mr. in super mario was very good i mean mr snyder oh okay yeah we're, we're looking at you mate um uh, the um, Justice League was lit quite well. It was all right. Um, again, seen, it was, again, it, I've not seen his latest, but I... um, his his latest is a breath of fresh air because there is actually, and you may want to sit down even more for this. There's light. I, I'm not. Um, I'm not as negative as as you here. However, he's countered that but by give, uh, on, having a, a depth of field that's as wide as your hair, but, James. But back on track, um, Doom. Back on track, yeah. So the, the director, and apologies for this because I'm going to murder this, um, Andre Bartoviak. Um, so that, um, So he's, he's a Polish director. Um, now, as I said, as a cinematographer... A lot, and things that like stand out. So he's done um, U.S. Marshals, the sequel mm. to um, The Fugitive, Lethal Weapon Four, Dante's Peak, Devil's Advocate, um, Species. The uh, original. So it was a getting a shot behind in the director's chair kind of film. This for him. He'd done a few. That oh, he uh, twins. He did twins. Oh, um, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he done. He's he's a, a fairly prolific director of photography, but um, yeah, Doom was his one, two, three, four, five, sixth film. Yeah. Um, the first being a, a short that I assume potentially made in Poland um, earlier in his career, uh, and then his first major film uh, was Romeo Must Die. I freaking uh, love which, Romeo Must Die. Um, and then Exit Romeo, Wounds. Romeo Must Die, Jet Li and... Um, yeah, Jet Li. And Thingy, the... 
R and B singer who personally uh, yeah. 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 So he did that. God, that's such a good film. Um and then immediately before this, Cradle to the Grave with the number two, even though it wasn't a sequel. Uh, and then oh, is it Cradle to the Grave? Uh, DMX. Yeah. Also, a film I rather enjoyed. Look at look, look at you with all the like early two thousands. <laughs> well, uh, these were some of my these were some of my to. first DVDs I owned. Yeah. Romeo Must Die and Cradle to the Grave. Romeo Must Die was in that. Uh, do you remember when DVD first came out? Warner Bros. Oh, and you got like and you got like. On... 50 DVDs packed into well, a thing. Well, th- you did, but these weren't them. We yeah. did have those yeah. as well because we got our DVD player from a, a place that no longer exists. Quick save. Mm. Well, it sort of doesn't exist because Quick Save was part of the Summerfield group and Summerfield group yeah. got bought by the co-op. So it does actually sort of still exist. But, um, um, yeah, so, yeah but so... I was going to say, do you remember Warner back at the start of DVD? Warner insisted, no, no. DVD cases should be cardboard. Yes. Uh, Romeo Must Die was in one of those plastic clip cardboard <laughs> DVD cases. Yeah. yeah, I've got a few of them. Yeah, and then Cradle to um, the Grave was a uh, DMX like crime heist film. I would say mm-hmm. of similar vein to the original Fast and Furious before Fast and Furious became what it what it is. Well, after Doom. He had four years off after like doing a film a year for five years. Um, he had four years off, and then brought us a film that I don't think either of us has seen, but maybe could make it into season two of this very series. What? Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li. Oh, I well, I've not seen it. I'm inclined to say it is upstairs. Sounds like an awful euphemism. No, I think I own it. Like, yeah. yeah. Wait, no, that's the uh, that's the that's the Kristen Kreok one. Yeah. Before before she became a, a lieutenant in a, a, a sex cult, and um, wait, they were both in the cult. Yeah, she she was further down the. Um... I thought she went to a point and then got out quick. No, I think she was. She's she's been let off because she was brainwashed she was a member rather than a leader um rather but, than uh, one of the two people in charge that allison mac was yeah yeah but yeah, yeah. again we're, we're digressing we are digressing yeah, <laughs> yeah into um into smallville sex cults here um so uh, they and, and then, it worth stating, and then that that but, film almost killed his directing career before eight, before eight we go years further for him to get another film worth stating highly criminal highly dangerous cults so Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, no. Um, while that may sound like we're making light there, mm, no, they were bad things. I mean, they were they were literally people screaming, "Will somebody save me?" Um, in in those. <laughs> no, it's not. Again, not not something that we should be joking about. I know. I know. Se- I know. Serious. We, 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 sh- we shouldn't be. We shouldn't be. S- serious I, thing. I, I, I'm I, I'm sorry. I just couldn't help myself. When um you know when it's those actors anyway yes. so yeah so actually quite a prolific director of photography which does really show off in this film yes um even though I don't actually think he was the DOP in this film um, but if you are a director think... who is a DOP yeah it's going to have a certain effect like it's not like I I know I know I keep going back to him. But um, Snyder now director is director of photography on all of his films as well as director, um, so like he has that full Wait, control. He so actually is credited as himself. both. He's credited as both on oh. Army of the Dead. Yeah. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like so. there's a reason they're different jobs. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, like that's what Kubrick did. Yeah, Kubrick was the same. Kubrick was a director of photography, became a director, and then had both jobs. And that's why, I think personally for me, like I've never been that big of a Kubrick fan. I think there are occasions where he accidentally gets the right script and the right cast, and because he does make beautiful films to look at, everything else kind of yeah. helps him out. Um, I think Snyder is um, 
similar, to be honest. Like, I think Snyder on a leash actually is a wonderful director. Snyder let free, not so much. Um, and this is an interest. It's it's an okay. interesting one. No, no, I'm, I'm leading back okay. into. Okay. It's an interesting one with occasions like this where, like, sometimes a director of photography um, who can make a beautiful-looking film or an editor who actually obviously understands the craft of gluing a film together and making it make sense, when they sometimes when they jump to being the director, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, and there doesn't seem to be any real... I think like, because passion. you also have to handle... As a director, you also got to handle acting, mm. and a direct, you could be the best director of photography in the world, mm. and not have the skill required. Yeah, to get the best out of your actors, and it's it's an odd one, is it? Like, because, like, I think, like this, I, I I think I wrote off when I watched it in uh, when it came out as worse than it was. And I like because I've got I actually enjoyed it more than I thought I did last night. Carl Urban in particular because I I was always Carl a bit Urban's sour always on. good. Well, that was the thing. Like for me, Carl Urban is someone a bit like um, Mark Ruffalo, and there's a certain point where I've suddenly started to appreciate their work, like where I just couldn't quite get it. And then for me, it, obviously with Carl Urban, it was Star Trek. Um, when when he played Bones, there was suddenly a like a light bulb moment. I said and... we always we always used to say that oh, it was perfect casting as Bones, and that he mm. he was the most out of the three core cast. He was the most like. Yeah, but watching this, I'm like, I don't think Colin was doing a particularly good. D. Forrest Kelly in Star Trek. I think that's just you know mm. Carl Urban. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think he's just, yeah. I think, I think he just has a natural demeanour to uh, that's mm. similar to uh, DeForest Kelly's bones. Like, yeah. I I think that like he's. I think maybe that's it. I think maybe possibly I always thought Urban was just a little bit samey. Um, yeah. Which some actors are, but actually I think that like there was actually a, a relatively subtle quality to it admittedly an over-the-top movie and an over-the-top performance well like, it's it nice the, how it was the right film i think how he obviously and how he is the good guy here right and mm. proven by the fact that he can take the formula and stay fine it just makes yeah, him the, the chosen one yeah it makes almost. him great mm. Mm. and speaking of why we're talking about him taking the formula mm. that first person segment is masterful and again yes, I think it really like, is actually very good like i mean i remember watching it at the time and thinking oh yeah that's a nice little gimmick and what have you I watching felt, it now i don't think it necessarily gives off a feel of a first person shooter game what i do think it gives off a feel of and i know this isn't necessarily quite what they're aiming for but I felt for five minutes like I was playing a light gun game. Yeah, but I think that's probably the closest that you could get it, to. I think it is. and mm. uh, I'm not saying that as a negative because I really did feel like I was playing a light gun I, game. <laughs> I think, if anything, it was either that or it was not necessarily a first-person shooter but maybe like a first-person horror game like um, yeah. Bioshock. Yeah. Um, it because it had that slightly slower. It was clunky... more the harsh movements is like, what gives off a light mm. gun feel. Yeah, I think. Um, but then, but it worked so well. Mm. It is. It almost, it almost felt like actually a an in game like an in engine cutscene. Yeah. From yes. a, from a Doom game or something. Yeah. So it wasn't necessarily that you were playing it yourself. Um, but it was like what you know what it would look like. But I mean. It was so so well done. Like the attention to detail on the movement, because as you say, it wasn't exactly right. But then I think if you'd had it as jittery as maybe like someone would be if they were actually playing yeah. Doom Three, for instance, um, it would have been like you would have got seasick. Um, so the the choice to make it a bit more like a light gun game or or what have you, and play into horror, um, like the the beats of cinema horror as yeah. well. Like that is 
a true work of like a master craftsman there and like i i know it sounds daft to say about a film like this or even a segment like this but that was incredible i think even now there would be people uh, like people like with first person shooters having advanced so much as well in it but like computer gaming having advanced so much even now you'd struggle to get a director um even like the uh, the john voight roberts or uh, who are massive massive gamers to, yeah. to pull something off as impressively as that it was really good it, it was good like, it, yeah um, it, it was a very very nice segment mm. i mean Yeah, it, it again. It, you're right. It, it's a film that has its. It's a, well. Let, let's ask the question: mm. Are video game movies good? Actually, yes. I mean, there's a caveat there. I'm gonna give the same answer as I did for Super Mario Bros. Yeah. No, but they have their moments. Yeah, I think that like. I think for me, in a similar way that, like, as we were talking with Super Mario Bros., it's like, there, there's a... I, mean, um, I had completely forgotten that Carl Urban was the hero and that... Uh, oh, I, 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 remembered. I, I had remembered. Um, I always thought, in my mind, the first person section was going to be Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> you see, I got a little bit... I got more out of this than I thought I was going to. And I yeah. think that's, like... Having watched two films in particular recently, I think that that's the reason why. I think I will admit because we watched Resident because yeah. we watched Resident Evil, which is a contemporary of this. What was two thousand and two? Wasn't it? I think I think it's. I probably shouldn't say no because why I said yes for Resident Evil. I do mm. think this is actually better than Resident Evil. I think this is better than Resident. I think this learns a lot from the mistakes that Resident Evil made. Yeah. Um, Again, I mean, as we said in the in in the Resident Evil episode, Resident Evil was the right film at the right time. Um, but I think that this film has learned a lot from that. Yeah. Um, I think it also takes different aspects and ideas. Um, this is very much um, it heavily influenced you, uh, from the Alien franchise. Yes. Um, it is very much um, a a space marine. Yeah. Film. I mean, this is, this is. Aliens, I suppose, more than anything else. Yeah. I, um, because it's not necessarily as wacky as Alien Four or worth noting. Alien... Not as good as Aliens. <laughs> no, it isn't as good as Aliens. But I also think that Aliens is a bit overrated, controversial. Um, it... depending on your taste in action or horror, it is one of the best two of the franchise. Yeah, we'll we'll go with that. We'll definitely go with that. Um, my personal preference is Alien over Aliens, which I um, think is what, what a lot of people would agree with you on. I think the people who prefer action will lean more towards Aliens, aliens. and people who prefer yeah. horror will lean more towards um, Alien. But um, but yeah, I think this like it it learnt from Resident Evil. Obviously, it had different influences. Um, it had a director and cinematographer who could pull off those influences. Yeah. I think that's the thing that like although this isn't as good as Aliens, um it looks as good or nearly as good. It doesn't uh, have the budget. Remember it doesn't have the it doesn't have the respective budget. So I, like I think we're reaching I, there but <coughs> I I mean I think we might go back and watch the Alien films. We were discussing this. Um, but um, I think for the level of constraints and financial, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I think they actually pull off something quite spectacular here. Um, and the other thing was, I watched Army of the Dead the night before I watched this. Um, and so I do think maybe, maybe Doom got a little boost because of that. Um, also, as, um, as we are here, and as we are want to do mm. on this service... Favourite yep. first-person shooter? We did this in episode... Well, we're going to do this in an episode. I'm sure we've asked about first-person shooters. Have we? Why? I'm sure. We've not done any first-person shooters yet. Yeah, I know. I think we just asked it at the end of the Street Fighter episode, which we haven't aired yet, but we've... 
we did first. I think you're right. I think we did. Yeah. Maybe we asked it because we knew we were going to have a fighting game at the very start. Yeah. Mm. Um, Maybe you're not spoiled. getting a favourite video game this week? Horror game. Well, we did, no, we did horror for Resident Evil. Evil. Um, <laughs> Maybe we've backed ourselves into a corner here. I will take the time to, uh, even if I have already mm. said this next week, ooh, mm. time, isn't it fun? <laughs> yeah. um, Titanfall 2 plays with time and is a very good game. I think you have said this next week. I believe uh, I have said this next week. Or so will have heard. I'm going to I use the that, time travel yeah. components of Titanfall 2 to pop back and say it's mm. still very good. Yes. Even though well, I haven't said that yet, it is still the best, yeah. one of the best single-player first-person shooter campaigns ever made. Uh, it's certainly a game I have to get around to playing. Uh, and it's I'm, also like um, you can pick it up regularly for like six quid. I'm pretty sure it's in my PlayStation Plus collection. Probably is. It has been on PS Plus a couple of times, yeah. I think. So I must have it. I must have it. Um, it's uh, it's just getting around to actually sitting down and playing it. It's not I super imagine long it's not... either. No, I was going to say. It's, it's you can knock it out uh, in a couple of nights. Maybe I'll do that. Um, I um, you know the other... kind of games you have been playing recently as well. They're probably a wonderful palate cleanser. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because um, I... I brought my. Uh, I visited, as you, if anyone saw the, the super uh, mustachio uh, episode last week, uh, I visited Cheshire to see friends and family last week, um, and I went into my mother's shed and dug out my driving wheel and seat, and what have you, and I brought that home, and I've managed to get it working on my PlayStation Four, um, using a sneaky little dongle that. Um, makes the PlayStation 4 think that the steering wheel is a different one. Um, and um, So I'm going to be spending quite a bit of time relearning how to drive um, use, uh, on that. Yeah. Um, luckily, it seems to be the week for it, because one of the races is quite slow. <laughs> so I'll, um, I'll, be, I'll be doing that. Um, but yeah, maybe Titanfall. Yeah. Maybe, it's maybe definitely I'll worth have it. a little Titanfall. It has the... Uh... Um, it has the two thumbs up from me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've heard great things. Uh, they are a decent team, obviously. They're the ones that birthed Call of Duty. Um, yes. When Call of Duty was still worth playing. Um, so. Um, and Titanfall 2 was released by EA to die. <laughs> yeah, it was a strange one. It came it a strange one. like mm. in between the sci fi futuristic Call of Duty. Mm. And one of the battlefronts or battlefields, like a week yeah. later, like Battle, it, battlefield, yeah, yeah, it was just released to like die. Yeah. And the thing is, they've gone on and created Apex Legends in the same world. That is a massive Which is success. Killing it. And they yeah. they so much that they've ended up being gifted a second studio. Apparently, Titanfall 2's online has had a massive recent like upsurge as well in the past it's few. Cool. Uh, I think it's because they've added some Titanfall content to Apex. Ah. Uh, um, so it's got that cross-pollination. And then, because the, they've been told as well that they can make Titanfall 3 whenever they want to. Oh, nice. So news, I think then. I think we'll, we'll Especially get Especially if we'll it. get another single-player campaign out of it. Well, I think that's the thing, that, like, they they do have two studios now. Um and I know one of I think one of them's working on one of the last Star Wars games that they've got to to play with. Um, before well, they'll be, potentially they'll be working on uh, Fallen Order Two, won't they? Fallen Order Two, yeah. Oh yeah, because that's the studio that they've taken yeah. over, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, um, they were they made Fallen Order. They haven't taken it over. Oh, Fallen yeah, Order did, is yeah. respawn. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, no, they've got. Um, but they have taken over another Star Wars, uh, another studio, haven't they? So, have they? Um, yeah, yeah, they they got gifted a, a second studio. But so, um, I mean, they've got plenty to do. Yeah, I will say yeah. if you do play it, go mm. into the mind of treating it as much of a puzzle game as a first-person mm. shooter at times, in regards to taking into account whether you should be on foot or in your mech or. And yeah, spatial yeah. awareness of jumping across walls and things. It's so a bit like playing knack, I imagine. Sure. 
Or maybe Knack 2. Or I've not Portal played with two. more killing things. I'll go with Knack 2. Um, but on that note, uh, yeah. we shall see you next week for Street Fighter 2. Yes, we will. Um, or will have, or have already. And we may yes. not actually next week know what the title of this video series is. No. Time. Mm. The ever See you later, everyone. <laughs> See you.